Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome for the first time. If you don't know me, I am Angela and I find my paradise through reading. Ah! And um, thank you so much for joining me today. I am just doing my December wrap up um, and I'm only doing it now. I've been sick, so if I sound kind of different, sorry, I'm still kind of in my my throat sore still. Um, and I've been sick for for about a week now. But I really wanted to get this wrap up done for you folks. Um, December was such a cool reading month for me. Um, I have a little bit of everything. Like I had a manga, I had a book of werewolves, a book of vampires. Ah, let me see what else I got. Um, a low stakes fantasy, a high stakes fantasy. I have three classics and I found what I believe to be just a perfect book. In all my years of reading, I have found like a book that I feel is just perfect. It's so perfect and I can't wait to share this with you guys. Um, I'm gonna save that for the last. So let's get started with the books that I read during the month of December. Okay, I'm going to start off with a manga, and this is Komi Can't Communicate. Um, this is the first volume of this series, and it's about Komi, who has like this severe social anxiety, so much so that she is scared to talk to people and to communicate. And so everybody thinks that, oh, she's so cool. She's that loner, that mysterious kind of person. And it's not that she's just really terrified of, of speaking, but a boy kind of start uncovers that truth and understands like, Hey, she wants friends <laughs> and she's just scared to talk to people. So he becomes her very first friend and he, um, wants to work with her to get 100 friends to make 100 friends and so that's what this uh manga is about and it was kind of cute although this is not one that i will continue um it was okay but it was just it was, just wasn't for me i don't know um and i heard great things about it so i had really really high hopes and maybe it was like a little bit of a hype um that i maybe expected it to be like way like way up here um it was just okay so i am going to unhaul this at some point um and not be continuing this but that was komi can't communicate okay sorry this is by tomohito oda okay now the next two books I read, if you remember, um, in my last video or last video or two videos ago, I don't know, but I was talking about how in December I wanted to continue on with some series, making some progress in some series that I had started. One of them was this trilogy of werewolves by Kelly Armstrong. I read Bitten in October, which was a reread for me. It is just oh my gosh it's just like it still stands as one of my just not one of my actual favorite werewolf story um which follows elena and she is the only living female werewolf and just like she runs away from the pack i mean she doesn't run away she just wants a regular life so she leaves the pack and wants a normal human life and then gets get called back to the pack um, to help with the situation. Um, so that was Bitten. And then this Omnibus has the other two books in here, which is Stolen and Beginnings. <coughs> Sorry. So Stolen is the second book in this trilogy. And this continues the story with Elena, with the pack. And there is just all this stuff is happening. She gets kidnapped. There's this billionaire who has this secret facility where they're like hunting down um like kind of paranormal beings you know um witches werewolves vampires uh voodoo priests things like that um and they're like experimenting on them and things like that it's just like this really sick thing that's that's going on it's just absolutely horrible so this 
second book was just packed with so much adventure and it was so high stakes and it was it was fantastic i ate this up and then the third book i also read um during the month of december and that was beginnings that is the prequel um which shows elena and clay um they are the bonded mated werewolf pair and this shows like how they met and how they fell in love and <clears throat> sorry like how she became a werewolf and ah their story is just it just it just <laughs> I love this so much and I'm so glad I finally completed this trilogy I highly recommend this werewolves by Kelly Armstrong the whole trilogy excellent all three books let's drink some wine here hmm Mm, mm, mm. Oh my gosh. Continuing on with series that I had started, I read The Tale of the Body Thief by Anne Rice. And this is the fourth book in the Vampire Chronicles. Anne Rice did it again. I thought The Queen of the Damned was good. This book was also so good oh my god and this is okay this is following vampire Lestat again and he at this point has been a vampire for hundreds of years and he's like ah this existence like seriously i want to be a human again i want to see the sun i want to feel things i want to be a human and so he um connects like this this body thief this guy comes to Lestat and is like I'm not even in my own body. I'm a body thief. And I can switch bodies. Like basically their souls can switch bodies. And he's like, I have that capability. I want to feel what it's, I want to know what it feels like to be you, to be the vampire Lestat and be a vampire. And you want to be human. And vampire Lestat is like super powerful. Like he's such a powerful vampire. Um, so he's kind of like, oh, is this a good idea? So he talks about it to like, um, some people that are very, or people, vampires, whatever, acquaintances or <laughs> that are very important to him. And they're all like, dude, it's a bad idea. You, you can't put that kind of power in like this person. Like this guy's like, that's not safe. That's, this is dangerous. You shouldn't do that. And vampire that's that's like, I'm going to do it. All right. So he agrees to like switch bodies with this guy for two days. He's like, give me two days. Um, and wow like <laughs> the whole thing and and this book actually like made me laugh out loud because Lestat when he becomes human he is so disgusted by everything because like I guess vampires don't sweat they don't you know have to use the bathroom facilities and he's just like oh this is disgusting Oh, this is, uh, you know, and then even the process of eating. And he's just like, oh, you know, you're just like chewing and chomping and it's disgusting. And so this whole thing just had me cracking up. And he would drink things like uh, water or tea or wine. And he's like, oh, it's disgusting. It's not thick like blood. And um, just, and then he was just so scared of dying. <laughs> he was like, he would like look at a flight of stairs and he's like, oh my God, I could fall down a flight of stairs and I could die. <laughs> and then he just like to learn to be human again. And it was, this, this book had so much adventure and what this, this body thief was doing with Lestat's body and this was crazy. It was crazy. It was funny. It was, it kind of got into that, you know, you can be in a human body, but that doesn't make you human. That was pretty much the essence of this book. And it's also that the grass isn't always greener on the other side, you know? <laughs> so Lestat's like, I want my freaking body back. Like, I want to be the vampire Lestat again. Like, this is nonsense. Um highly recommend this book. I recommend the whole Chronicle so far and I will absolutely continue on 
with this series. So that's The Tale of the Body Thief by Anna Rice. Oh my God. And continuing with series, I read Bookshops and Bone Dust by Travis Baldry. Um, this is the second book. I don't think it's like actually a series, is it? A new adventure set in the world of legends and lattes. High fantasy, first loves, and secondhand books. Um, so this um, follows Viv. The first book was Legends and Lattes, and that's where Viv, this orc, left the battlegrounds and she wanted to open up a coffee shop. And um, that was her dream. In this book, this is a prequel to Legends and Lattes, where Viv was still on the battlegrounds in this net, she got injured. And while recovering, her team sent her to the nearby town, uh, like a seaside village, to recover. And she wanders into this bookshop and makes friends with um, this the, the bookshop owner and their dog griffin owl looking pet. <laughs> Um, but there is all kinds of weird stuff happening. So this book was so fun. It had some adventure. It had some mystery. It had love. It had humor. It had friendship. I mean, this was just so cute. And I adored this book. And just like Legends and Lattes, I mean, this was perfect. Such a cozy read. Highly recommend. Okay. Continuing on with series that I had started, I read Iron Flame, book two of the, what's it called? Fourth Wing series, is that what they're calling it? Um, so this came out in November and the first book was Fourth Wing. This is the second and this is just like the continuation of just a high stakes this is like following violet um and she has like these dragons there's this war college um all this stuff is going on and i mean i can't even explain it what i can say about this book i did not like it as much as the first one i finished it quickly it was a page turner there i did have to keep putting it down though because sometimes it was just too much. It was back to back crazy things happening. So it's like you couldn't even get a breath, you know? I'd, I'd just get over something happening and then boom, something else happens and I'd close the book and I'm like, I just can't. Like seriously, can I get a break? You know, cause it was just constant things happening back to back. And because of that, I feel like there wasn't a whole lot of character development. So as soon as a character would be introduced, something crazy was happening, you know? And then another crazy thing was happening. So it was hard to really care about these characters because so much stuff was happening. Um, and I was kind of losing respect for Violet because she was, she's just, I felt like she's so careless. She doesn't take the advice of her peers or her team or leaders, you know, she's just, she always wants to do her own thing and can be pretty reckless and putting her friends, family, love, dragons in danger, um, thinking that she knows best. And it's just, so I wasn't digging that part about her. Um, and I also wasn't digging that she was on this back and forth with her love. Like she's like, oh, I'm going to be mad at you because you're not telling me all of your deepest, darkest secrets, you know, and this went on for so long. Like she just kept treating him like whatever, you know, like she didn't love him because he wasn't pouring out all of his secrets. Like some secrets aren't his to tell. Like this is not about him. It's not about her. It's about, you know, everyone and the safety of kingdoms. I mean, and so I just felt like she was just really mature. She was just annoying. And that's my opinion. I mean, I will continue reading it. 
Um, I still love the dragons and their, their personalities and the interaction and the magic, the battles, the craziness. You know, it can be fun, but Violet can be a little less annoying, I guess. Um, but that's that. That is Iron Flame by Rebecca Yaros. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. I'm not going to say it wasn't fun, but it was a bit much. It was a bit much. Also, continuing what series I had started is I read C.S. Lewis's Paralandra. This is the second book in his space trilogy. The first book was uh, Melacandra, where he was, Dr. Ransom, was kidnapped by some uh, people, two humans, and taken to Mars. In this book, he voluntarily is whisked away um, by some like spiritual supernatural beings to Venus, which they call Paralandra. He's not sure why he's there what his mission is or what his purpose, but he goes and he figures it out. Apparently, Venus is almost like what Earth had. Uh, it was Eden. It was paradise. It is in paradise. This being arrives who wants to bring a new order to Paralandra, which is not hell on Earth, but hell on Venus. Basically, there is that Will you give in to temptation and open up the gates to, you know, what is it, Pandora's box or biting that apple and letting sin and imperfection take over the world. And so he is there and he is trying to figure out if he can stop this from happening, if he should stop this from happening. Heck, what is happening? Um, and there is a lot of good in here. A lot of the conversations were really bizarre because he's, oh, he's trying to explain things that don't have words because like he can't explain death. He's trying to explain death to this woman that is there. And she's, you know, not human. She's, I think, kind of human body. I think maybe she's green skinned, but she is female. And he's trying to explain to her about sin, about death, about things that aren't, you know, shouldn't be. And he's trying to prevent this thing happening. And just, it's like circles of conversation, you know, that it just gets really hard to follow sometimes. But this book was really good. This was really good. And there's one more book. Oh, uh, what's it called? I don't even remember, but I will be getting it and finishing off this space trilogy. Very good. One of my favorite authors, C.S. Lewis. Ah, love him. Okay, then we have, we're getting to classics now. Mansfield Park by Jane Austen. Look how gorgeous this book is. It's not so pretty. This is a Chiltern um, book. Got the gold edges. It is so pretty. Glossy pages. Um, this was a chunker. It was about 500 pages. And this follows Fanny, um, who, well, her family, her aunt and uncle are pretty well off. And they live in this area called Mansfield Park, very high up society people live there. Um, and so her parents weren't really well off, but her aunt and uncle who are, are like, hey, we're going to take in Fanny. I don't know why they did that, because they kind of treated her like she was garbage. Like they felt like they were doing something charitable and they're like, oh, we're gonna, whatever. No, they kind of treated her like she was way below them. Um, and then they had, I think two daughters and two sons and Fanny was just like always below the daughters and sons. And like they would have horses and they don't think that Fanny needs to have a horse or you know, they were just worried about their daughters finding matches and their sons and what they're doing. And Fanny was just like, Ugh. you know, so it was just really weird. Like, why would you even bother bringing her in, acting like you're going to give her a better life, but then treating her garbagey? I don't know. But she grew up into a teenager and she's just like really sweet and humble and kind. And 
the three cousins that she grew up with didn't really treat her that well, except for one that was, I think his name is Edmund. And um, he, he treated her really nicely. He really cared about her and he was very polite and, you know, would, you know, help her with all kinds of things and was just really her companion uh, growing up. And just like, this is my third Jane Austen book. The first was Sense and Sensibility. The second was Pride and Prejudice. And then there's this one. This I feel was on the side of Sense and Sensibility where it wasn't a whole lot of plot. There was, maybe this is maybe like a character driven book. It's just high society people entertaining themselves and talking and finding matches of, you know, good stature and having the right connections and doing the right thing. I don't know. It's just bleh. so just like Sense and, Sense, and Sense, Sense and Sensibility, you're like 300 pages into this nonsense um, before anything slightly interesting even starts to happen. Okay. <laughs> That's what happened here. I'm like 300 pages in before I'm like, oh, now something's kind of happening. But even then, you're just still like not that interested. The writing, of course, is superb. It is. Um, if you like character-driven books, absolutely. Would I read it again? No. No, I would not. Um, so Sense and Sensibility was the same way. Character driven, a whole lot of nothing, not a big plot, nothing like, oh, mm. um, but it was well written. Um, and yeah, Pride and Prejudice though, mm, that was that was fun. It was interesting. It kind of kept you interested. Whereas like this was just, you kind of had to like, well, for me anyway, I really just had to, get through it. Um, I wasn't really excited to pick it up and I would do one or two chapters every now and then and just try to get it over and done with. But I got it done. Here we go. <laughs> Mansfield Park. Book that I read in Christmas is A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. And this is another chill turn. So it's just very gorgeous with the gold edges. I mean, look at these books. Aren't they so pretty? Like, I just love, I just love, I love these books. Anyway, this is my second year in a row with A Christmas Carol. I actually listened to it on Audible. The guy that read this book, let me see. I wrote it down somewhere. Where did I write it? Oh, his, the guy that read it on Audible is Gary Sinise, Sinise, S-I-N-I-S-E. Remarkable job. He does such a remarkable, remarkable job. Okay. And obviously this is a story about Ebenezer Scrooge. He is this old man who, I guess he's an accountant and he is... He's Scrooge, you know, he hates everybody. He hates everything. He is not nice. He is not humble. He is not charitable. He cares about nothing except working and hoarding money and being, you know, a penny pincher. And so he's just known as just this horrible, miserable person. And so this takes place on Christmas Eve and he goes home and he is visited by three ghosts individually. Um, the first ghost that comes to him is the ghost of Christmas past. And this ghost takes him to the past and shows him um, what his Christmases in the past were like, not just for him, but for people that he knows, uh, people that he loved, things like that. And then he is... He goes back home and the second ghost appears to him. That's the ghost of Christmas present. And he takes Scrooge and shows him what Christmas is like now. Um, and for not just himself, but again, people that he cares about or used to care about. 
um, family, acquaintances, colleagues. So he shows them Christmas as it is now. Then the third ghost comes and shows him what Christmas is, will be like in the future for not just him, as well as, you know, his nephew and, you know, an old love of his and things like that. So obviously everybody knows the story at the end of these three uh, revelations, his life has changed and he's like, I will no longer be, you know, whatever. And um, it's just amazing. And the guy that read it, it just, he does the voices and every, everything so well. And it's so enjoyable. It's so quick. I think maybe the, the audiobook, an hour and a half, three hours. I have no idea, but it's quick. Um, perfect to listen to while you're wrapping your Christmas presents or in the car, um, stuck in traffic because you're Christmas shopping or whatever. This is what I was listening to over the holidays. And I actually got more from it the second time around. And so I look forward to this being a an annual tradition of listening to A Christmas Carol. Love it. Highly recommend. Holidays, you can it's it's done and last <laughs> last but not least this last classic took me by surprise blew me out of the water i don't know i didn't even see this coming i gotta keep it together i gotta keep it together Here's the thing, I remember watching this movie years and years and years ago. I remember bits and pieces. I wasn't, I guess maybe it was so long ago, I didn't really understand the depth of it. Um, I just didn't really care, I don't know. Oh, my heart still, I gotta tell you, this is on one of the books of um, the list of 100 greatest books ever written. And this book to me is perfection. This book is perfect. And I'm gonna tell you why. The book I'm talking about is Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. Oh, good Lord. I gotta show you, it's kinda glossy. Look at how short this thing is. This book, and I listened to this, I borrowed it on Libby, so it was free. This was read by, I lied, no, Christmas Carol was read by Tim Curry. Tim Curry, I'm sorry guys, it was Tim Curry that read this. It was Gary Sinise that um, read this. I, Ah, Gary Sinise. Okay, he read this um, and this audiobook, and he just did such an excellent job. And this is only like an hour and a half long, if you're listening to this. And this book is perfect in so many ways. Okay, this is a classic. So definitely, if you want to start with a classic or you don't know how to start with classics, you don't know what to do. Absolutely. This is like probably my number one my number one recommendation if you want to try out a classic for the first time. But this, oh, this had, it's perfect because it's so short and says everything it needs to say. It has this huge story in such a short book. It, not a word is wasted. And I laughed. I bawled my eyes out. Um, I felt for these characters. I, there, this was so emotional and it was so good and it was so well written and it's just, and it's just like the perfect length. It is the perfect length. You're not, you know, dragging things out with details about this, that, or what, it just gets right down to like what's important. And it just devastated me and broke me and did everything. And I just loved this book. And 
let me tell you when I say I loved this book so much. After I read it or listened to it the first time, I'm getting teary on. After I listened to it for the first time, Free on Libby, I went to Audible and I purchased it because I was like, I want to listen to this again and again and again and again. And I listened to this book two and a half times. I'm halfway through it the third time around. Two and a half times um, during the month of December. So to love a book that much that you almost immediately, after like a couple days and letting it settle in, this book still hasn't left me. But after a couple days of it settling in, I listened to it again. And it's just, it is so phenomenal. So yeah, this is following Lenny and George. And I don't want to spoil anything. I almost feel like it's so great if you can just go into it not knowing. But um, to keep it very brief, um, there's George, who's this maybe average size guy. And there's Lenny, who's this big, massive dude. And they're traveling together. But Lenny is very slow. I don't know if he, he had like some kind of brain damaged or he's just developmentally born that way. Um, but he's just very slow. He forgets everything. And George is his companion. He's kind of looking out for him. And it's just so hard because George is like, you know, he, he'll be like, oh my gosh, you, you know, you're you crazy son of a gun, you know? And um, it was just, sometimes you'll see he's so frustrated, constantly repeating the same things to Lenny and trying to get Lenny to understand certain things. And they're trying to, they're traveling to this ranch to work as some ranch hands. Um, and just Lenny just really depends on George for instruction and direction. And Lenny is just massive and strong and he doesn't realize his own strength. And so he does sometimes get into trouble. And um, that's all I can say without really, <sighs> without spoiling anything, but this is going down as my favorite, one of my favorite books of all time, of all time. This is right up there. I can't say enough about this book and it is so tiny. I can't, this, seriously, I can't, I, I have no words. I can't believe how big of a story and how big of a punch this little book can deliver it's just it just packed a huge punch it just made me like laugh out loud and you know there was just like a little bit of mystery there was friendship loyalty there was just tough decisions there's just you know, people just really looking out for each other. Um, it's just, it just, it, it was everything. This book was everything. Um, 100% recommend. I, and you know, De December was a lot of great reads and I'm talking Mansfield Park aside, okay? I'm sorry, Jane Austen, but it's just not, it's not my thing. But Iron Flame was fun. Bookshops and Bone Dust, that was fun. Body Thief, yes, Anne Rice, she did that. Kelly Armstrong, the Werewolf series, let's go. Like, I want to read more of her stuff. I mean, it was just so much. And even with all those great reads, this, this little guy right here, this little guy. Yes, you, I'm talking to you. My best book, this is my favorite book of December. Hands down, my favorite book of December. <laughs> surprised me like nothing else has surprised me. I mean, this is, it's crazy, but it is what it is. That's why I love books. They just do things to you and they, uh, they make you feel things and they take you places. And it's just, it's just been an amazing experience, so. That is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any recommendations and what you read during the month of December. 
and yeah i hope to see you again soon <laughs> and if you like this video give me a like subscribe leave a comment happy reading bye